Yes guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another review for you guys today. It's Newcastle nil, Chelsea 2, the St. James's Park curse is finally over and for at the very least a few hours, Chelsea are top of the Premier League so we can sit there, savour it and look down on everybody else but we're going to go into the full review of Newcastle nil, Chelsea 2 in this video. We're also going to discuss the player ratings for this video as well towards the end of it so guys stay tuned for that and also if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and press the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we release any new content. But guys, let's go straight into this video and also we're top of the league. Savor it, guys. Lineup came out. There was nothing really to complain about. Rudiger was the chosen centre-back to replace Thiago Silva after he returned back from international duty on Thursday afternoon or something like that, which was way too late for him in terms of what Frank Lampard was thinking. So he decided to rest him with Renz in mind so we had Rudiger playing for today in the most part didn't harm us too much I mean there was a couple mistakes from Rudiger which weren't really capitalized on by Newcastle but other than that it was a solid performance I won't delve too deep into it Kovacic also came in to replace Kai Havertz who's still getting back to full match fitness after self-isolating and really and truly Kovacic is going to give Frank Lampard a massive selection headache. I don't think the argument is going to be between Kovacic and Havertz is going to be more Kovacic and Mount over which one starts between the pair of them but it is a massive selection headache there. He had another flawless performance today. Near flawless. There was one sloppy pass in that match but only one sloppy pass and we're really nitpicking if we start picking on that. So other than that it weren't really too much to it. It wasn't the most inspiring performance I will be honest but it Again, say it quietly, it was the performance of champions. It wasn't our best performance. We didn't really get out of first or second gear, but we cruised to victory against a Newcastle side that were resolute defensively, but didn't really offer much going forward. I'll be real, their tactics for most of the first half was just St. Maximan and Inshallah, and it didn't really work out because we know St. Maximan basically just a French willy and he ain't got that end product about him we already know that he's a baller until he gets to the final third and then it's just nothing much but same way Newcastle were playing so defensively they didn't even try to press us they didn't even look like they could press a light switch let alone a player in that first half so it was going to be hard for him anyway because he was the only player trying to create anything the early goal as well, the own goal, Chilwell, I, I forgot who the guys, whoever scored the own goal was, but it was a good aggression from Chilwell to create the error from the Newcastle defender to put it into the back of his net for 1-0, and that just made it even more easier for us, because we were able to take control of the game, and we didn't even really need to push forward with any intensity, we did drop off a little bit, especially towards the end of the first half, it wasn't the same sort of intensity, the same sort of push to get the first goal. But it was expected and it was also understood like with the early 12.30 kickoff coming straight off the international break and half of our players had turned up two days before. Like this, this team was going to be fatigued. They weren't going to be at their best for 90 minutes. We were going to see them turn up in phases. We expected that. That makes the early goal so much better for us because... It saves us having to do anything else. I mean, Newcastle, we've already said, they didn't really try to do much for us. And if anything, we could have killed the game off in the first half with better finishing. Timo Werner is not going to be happy with his finishing in that game. I'm also going to put my hands up there and say, I don't think it was a bad performance from him. Realistically, if Timo Werner scored, I think he would have been the first player in Chelsea history to score in five games off the bounce. I'm not sure if that's five league games or five games in general. But if he's the first Chelsea player to do that in the last 20 years then that means none of our other strikers have done it so in my opinion it wasn't a terrible performance from him uh, the third the third chance i will put my hands up and say he could have put a bit more power behind it but i'm not even angry with him trying to side foot it to hakim ziyech because it made sense Ziyech was in the right position for it. The issue was the delivery. He didn't put enough power behind the pass. And it was easy for the Newcastle defenders to sweep that one up. The other two as well. I mean, we know what it is like with Timo Werner. He creates so many chances. One of them goes into the back of the net. But if I'm correct, I don't even think his conversion rate was that good at Leipzig. He was missing a couple chances at Leipzig as well. And we've seen games from Werner where he does miss a couple chances. And he scores a couple chances as well. So as long as the conversion rate isn't too bad. As long as he's He's still banging in goals the same way that he has been banging in goals for us this season. I am not going to complain too much. But half-time came in. 
I won't say we were lucky to be 1-0 one, one up. It wasn't that case. We did put our foot off the gas pedal a little bit towards the end of the first half, but we were still controlling the game for long periods. Second half came round and Newcastle came up with a bit more intensity. They finally pulled their balls out of their purse and actually decided to give us a game of football. And they nearly equalised. There was a couple chances there. I'll be real, Rudiger, man, he plays like he's colourblind sometimes. I, like, I love the guy, but he really plays like he's colourblind sometimes. And a better team would have probably made us pay for those chances. But regardless, we still got the victory out of it. We still got the W, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. I don't want to be too negative on this video. Look at the way we're playing over the last few months. I can't still be moaning and moaning about individual performances. But Rudiger, bar those individual mistakes, he was okay. The rest of the defence looks solid as well. We're going to delve more into that in player ratings. But we need that second goal to kill things off. And the good thing and the good thing about the way we're playing, even if Newcastle started going forward and they started attacking us a bit more, our pressing was on point the whole match and our transitions were ridiculous. The way we transition compared to a few weeks ago, like that same week where we were playing Sevilla and Manchester, Uni Manchester United and Southampton. Sorry, that one had to come out. But yeah, the, the same way we were pressing... You remember the way we were pressing against those two teams and the way we're pressing now? It is night and day. Transitions were absolutely excellent. The second goal came yet again from another transition. Ball found itself to Tammy Abraham, who finally put the ball in the back of the net. He, had, he was missing a couple chances before then, but persistence pays off. And it was a patience game with Chelsea for this match because we knew a goal was coming I was confident throughout that match like just because we take our foot off the gas pedal or we haven't we haven't created a lot of chances or we're passing the ball around from the defense a bit too much it doesn't mean that anything anything bad is going to happen this isn't the same Chelsea team from last season that's why we can afford to play this patient game we just have to wait for the space to open and then make them pay for it when that space opens and that's exactly what we did I thought it was a very good performance from Chelsea today resolute and it's the type of performance where, I mean, let's be real, if Liverpool had that performance last season, people would be saying, another strong performance from maybe the future Premier League champions. And we're not going to go out there and say we are going to be the future Premier League champions, but you sit there right now and tell me why not. Tell me why not, because City look a mess right now, Liverpool look a mess right now, the title race is open, and we have one of the best squads in the Premier League. That I will say on camera, and that I will say with chess, this team is strong. And if we can get past the Christmas period without too many injuries, watch out. Watch out. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to go into the player ratings now. We'll start off with Edward Mendy. Quiet game. Didn't really have too much to do. Um, turned up when needed with a, with a couple good big saves, especially in the second half. I don't know if he got a touch on that long staff shot, but he turned up when we needed him to. So I'm going to give him a six. Didn't, do t didn't have enough to do, so I'm not going to give him any higher than that. Rhys James, man of the match in my opinion. If it's not him, it's N'Golo Kante. It's one or the other. But he was just bodying everybody on that right-hand side. Winning aerial duels with the likes of Joel Linton and Andy Carroll, who's meant to be bread and butter in this game of heading. Rhys James, man. Absolute ridiculous. He gets a 9. Antonio Rudiger, solid. Clean sheet. Did have a couple mistakes in him, though. Did look like he was passing to the opposite team for a little bit. I have to give him a five. I am sorry, not sorry, but we move. Uh, Kurt Zuma, good aerially, as per usual. Kurt Zuma, I mean, Thiago Silva's composure is also really starting to rub off on this guy. He was marshalling that back line excellently. I'm going to give him a seven. Uh, ben Chilwell as well. Good aggression, strong on the press as well on the left-hand side. Made it very easy for Kante and Kovacic to sweep up any loose balls. And he was, had a lot of good aggression as well to create the first goal for Chelsea. So, I'm going to give him a 7. Decent to cause turnovers as well. Um, who else are we going to next? Captain N'Golo Kante. The mop himself. Mopped up any transitions. He, any loose balls. He was all on that. Switch play excellently as well. Again, do want to throw the disclaimer. Newcastle did not press us to save their lives. But Kante was still excellent today. Anytime they were trying to transition, he was the first one on them. Sweeping up any loose balls from Ben Chilwell or Reese James on the far right sides when they were doing their jobs as well. Excellent performance from him. And Golo Kante gets a 9 as well. Um, who are we going to next? Mason Mount. Two goal scoring opportunities created from him today. 
Strong pressing as well, and he looked very confident in and around the ball. His movement was excellent, so I'm going to give him a 7. Mateo Kovacic as well, I think he had the joint highest um, chance creation. Uh, I think he had the joint highest chances created today. That combined with Tammy Abraham on 3. And yeah, his pressing was a madness today. He was absolutely ridiculous. It was the same with N'Golo Kante. Did have one sloppy pass in him, but again, that's just me nitpicking. I'm not going to go too much into it. So yeah, it was a good performance from him. I'm going to give him a 7. Timo Werner, very frustrated. He will be frustrated with his performances. Um, the chances being taken as well, he knows he could have had a goal in today. I think with the high expectations, you would want that goal. You would want a bit more from him. But I'm not going to say it was a terrible performance from him. I think if he was on the pitch for the full 90 minutes, he would have eventually got a goal. Uh, I'll push to a 6. I'll give him a 6. I don't think it was a bad performance from him. I think we got to be real. Just because he didn't put the ball in the back of the net doesn't mean it was terrible from him. He didn't have a bad performance. I thought he came in and dropped deep and got involved in the link-up play as well. His dribbling was excellent, which is a very underrated part of his game. I mean, not a very underrated part of his game, but it's a part of a game that's been overlooked over the last few weeks. He was beating players excellently, and he got the assist for Tammy Abraham's second goal as well. So yeah, I am going to give him a six, and I'm going to give him a six with confidence. Tammy Abraham, another goal involvement for him. Nearly got an assist as well if Timo Werner finished one of his chances. But that's nine goals and nine assists in seven starts for him. He had, he had the, uh, the highest chance creations as well with Mateo Kovacic. Couple sloppy pass in the first half. We will talk that into it as well. But I thought it was a solid performance for him. So I'm going to give him a 7. And the final player, Hakim Ziyech. Excellent delivery in from the right. I think he was let down by the fact that there was a lot of Newcastle players in the box. Which would have hindered his ability to find his man. But his crosses were always dangerous. And they were always finding their target. Um, rating, I need to give the rain before I end this. Uh, I'll go for a seven. Seven, yeah, I'll go for a seven. It's nothing like the first three games, but it wasn't a bad performance either. So yeah, I'll go to a seven for him. But guys, this is the end of the player ratings. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G, and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care, up the Chels, and we're top of the league. Come on!